insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 141, Healthy Family Relationships. I'm your host, Madison Whalen, and my co-host, Joseph Whalen. Hello, Maddie. How you doing today? Hi, I'm doing all right, mostly. How about you? I guess I'm mostly all right, too. (laughs) You know, just been a bit tired today, so. That's okay. It happens to all of us. It is the middle of the week, so. Yeah. It'll get better. True. True. So how was school this week? Uh, it's been fine so far. Um, nothing really too entirely big happened. Nothing exciting? I mean, mm, it's kind of been like a regular week for the most part. Okay, well that's good. Nothing bad though, right? Yeah. That's um, really the important thing. Um, I have gotten a new update on, um, my braces. And that is? I'm wearing rubber bands again. How exciting is that? Don't we all wish we could wear rubber bands? But, I mean, the good thing is I have only five more months left until um, I can finally take have my braces taken off. That's great. And then what we'll do is we'll do a follow-up podcast on that and uh, see how things work out for you. Yeah, like, what, part three at this point? It, it would be part three of braces, yes. We'll have to probably have to rewatch that so that we can talk about, hey, this is what happened after that. This was the torture that you've gone through the last five years of your life. Not, I don't think it's been five years at this point, has it? Well, how old were you when you got them? I was in like fifth grade. Well, that's close. It's almost five. Almost. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about healthy relationships with your healthy family relationships. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So families can be a pretty can be a pretty complicated thing. What makes up a family? What are its functions? What type of family units are there and how do families help you? In this episode of Insights into Teens, we'll continue a, our deeper look at relationships and dig deeper into what it means to be a family. But before that, uh, I wanted to ask all of you to subscribe to the podcast. You can hit us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, pretty much any place you can get a podcast. What are we listed as? Um, We're we're listed as Insights into Things. So our audio... Our audio... Is listed as Insights into Teens. And our video versions are listed as insights into things. You can email us at con- at comments at insights in the things.com. We're on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights in the things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights in the things podcast. We're on Instagram at Instagram dot insights into th- sla- at Instagram.com slash insights into things. I'm sorry, not used to this. Um, or you can get us at our official website at www.insightsinthethings.com. It's like riding a bike. You keep falling off and scraping your knees, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? I think we're ready. All right, good. Here we go. So what makes a family a family? This comes to us from study.com. Although a family is widely categorized as two parents and their children, it isn't always so simple. Families can be difficult, comforting, frustrating, and wonderful altogether. No matter what, families are one of the biggest influences on our lives. Some of our personalities, fears, emotions, and dreams come from our families. A family is known as a group of people affiliated by a specific relationship. 
Basically, the family is the most fundamental unit of social organization with which we most intimately identify. Your family influences your personal, emotional, intellectual, and social development. A family is a group of people who share a very personal level of relationship. But there are a few different ways that you can define these relationships, and families generally contain a few different roles. Some of the different types of roles in a family are consanguin. <laughs> you know, the read through went so much better. Consanguinity. Consanguinity. So th the different types of roles are consanguinity, affinity, and co residence. A consanguinity relationship is a relation of birth. For example, siblings have a consanguinity relationship with their parents, but your parents are probably not biologically related to each other. This is an example of an affinity relationship. An affinity relationship is a relationship based on marriage between spouses. Scroll up. <laughs> I'm trying. Stick to the script. I'm sorry. <laughs> A co-residence relationship means that two people are living together. This relationship illustrates notable aspects of family, since almost in almost all societies, a family is defined as living together or sharing the same space. There is also a family relation in terms of adoption, which doesn't have a different name to it. This relationship is based on a legal affirmation of someone wanting to go through the process of adopting, fostering, or taking care of a younger child that isn't biologically related to them. We now have an idea of the characteristics of a family, but what are the functions of family? The traditional function of a family is the primary way to raise children. Family introduces you to cultural norms, social behavior, education, group interactions, morals, and pretty much everything else. They also enforce cultural and social rules and morals by teaching you that your actions have consequences, or at least we hope they do. Families are really important, but their significance goes beyond that. As social creatures, we're emotionally, mentally, and physically healthier when we have at least some deep and personal relationships. Healthy families can help us at a young age. They help develop the values and skills to become successful members of society, and they help us avoid behaviors that may put our health at risk. So that in very detailed uh, definition is what a family is. Of those types of families, what do you think your family fits into? Um, well, I guess I would technically have a consanguinity relationship with you and mommy since I'm by blood related to both of you. Correct. But you two would have an affinity relationship with each other because you're not biologically related to each other. You're only really related by marriage. Correct. Now, it's interesting. When we went through the read-through and you know, we had to kind of make a, a change in the, the show notes um, for that particular type of relationship, an affinity relationship, you were surprised when I said that it's possible that a husband and wife could be related to each other by blood. Is that true? I mean, a bit. I don't know. I guess, like... I mean, I know, especially in history, there have been times where relationships were based on blood. Sure. And, like, marriages were based on blood. I guess now, because society kind of deems that as not really okay, I was kind of a bit surprised. But looking at it from... Looking at it a bit more... Yeah, I can see that sometimes happens. Well, and it's interesting because there are <clears throat> legal definitions of who can and can't marry. Um, and those legal definitions vary depending on where you live. Like, for instance, in most places, a brother and a sister couldn't marry. That's, that's unacceptable. But two cousins, depending on how closely related they are, could. Like, for instance... Franklin Roosevelt, former president of the United States. Eleanor Roosevelt, their cousins, and they married. In fact, they were so closely related that Eleanor Roosevelt didn't have to change her last name when she got married because it started out her maiden name was Roosevelt. Hmm. So that's a good example of that. 
And that sort of thing happens frequently, but you look at uh, royalty. You know, a lot of royal families intermarry. And they intermarry a couple of relations apart from each other. And the reason for that is genetic diversification, we'll say. So if two people that come from too similar a genetic makeup reproduce, then you can have uh, a high incidence of birth defect. Uh, and this happens a lot when you go and get a blood test. So when you get married to somebody, most states today and most countries today require you to get a blood test. And part of that blood test is to make sure you're not too closely related to each other. And that's because if, if you are and you do choose to have children, those children could come out with genetic deformities. So there's a, there is a good deal of thought that's put into this in today's society. But in the past, people intermarried mainly because they kept the power and the money and the authority within the family at that point in time. Okay. So there's a lot of considerations that can't come around that, but it's still not uncommon to see people that are related by blood to marry like that. I don't want to dwell too much on that, but your reaction to that initially, I think, kind of warranted some additional uh, analysis, let's say. Okay. Uh, so we know what a family is now. We know a couple of different details about the family. What else are we going to learn? Um, We're going to learn that our tablet holder does not hold our tablet at the proper angle. Okay. <laughs> Leave it be. <laughs> I know you're not going to cut this out, so whatever. Right. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the different types of family units when we come back. All right. We'll be right back. Yep. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about healthy family relationships. And now we're going to take a deeper dive in the di in, in, into the different types of family units. And this comes to us from family.lovetoknow.com. So family structure has changed over the past few years, and there is no longer a typical standard for what a family is made of. There are plenty of different forms of f family units, some that can consist of multiple categories. So the first kind we have is the nuclear family, which means they make bombs. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I kind of had to say that. Um, but the nuclear family is known as the traditional form of a family, and it's what some people feel the word family normally suggests. This family consists of two parents and their children. This family has long was long held in esteem by society as being the ideal in which to raise children. Children in nuclear families receive strength and stability from the two-parent structure and generally have more opportunities due to the financial ease of two adults. In America, about 22% of people live in nuclear families. So nuclear families are kind of a very traditional, people like to say, a 1950s idea. You know, it's the mom, the dad, and 2.5 kids is, is what the, the joke has always been. And it gets the name nuclear family because the mother and the father are the nucleus of the family and the children are, you know, the electrons that, that kind of rotate around it. Hmm. And 
yeah, society kind of held that as the norm for the longest time. And as you got into the 60s and 70s and the divorce rates increased, you had the women's liberation movement where, uh, you know, women were, were finally, re, you know, claiming their place in society where they weren't taking this subservient role as, a, a, you know, a homemaker. You had a lot of women who were single parents, a lot of, a lot of women who were having children without being married. So you kind of drifted away from that. That winds up bringing us to the single parent family. So the single parent family consists of one parent raising one or more children on their own. The family includes a single parent of any gender and their child or children. A single parent family is really the biggest change society has seen in terms of the changes in family structures in a while. Single parent families are genuinely close and find ways to work together to solve problems like dividing up household chores. When one parent is home, it may be a struggle to find, when only one parent is home, it may be a struggle to find childcare as there's one parent who's working. So that, that single parent family struggles to have childcare because that single parent has to work. You don't have that stay at home mom or stay at home dad. So this limits income opportunities, and in many cases, although many single parents have support from relatives, it, it can be tough. You know, my one of my best friends was in a single parent family growing up. His mom and dad had divorced, I want to say when he was probably eight or nine or so, and the dad happened to be in the military, so he traveled around a lot and wasn't always there, and uh, his mom worked very hard. She, I have to tell you, she was probably the hardest working woman that I knew. She would work two and three jobs just to make sure the bills were paid and the kids were taken care of because it was him and his older brother. And, uh, she was, she was really incredible just with the energy that she had to take care of the family. But you know, you do what you have to do to make it work. We also have extended families. The extended family structure consists of two or more adults who are related either by blood or marriage, living in the same home. This family includes many relatives living together and working toward common goals such as raising the children and keeping up with the household duties. Many extended families include cousins, aunts, uncles, and grandparents living together. This type of family structure may form due to financial difficulties or because, because older relatives are unable to care for themselves alone. Extended families are becoming increasingly common all over the world. The family, This family type can also include your close friends who may also consider, you may consider to be close enough to be uh, categorized as family. Now, in my experience, we had this type of arrangement several times, I want to say. You know, when I was a, a kid, we had my grandmother was living at home with us because she was older and infirm, couldn't live on her own. There was a period when my uncle had gotten hurt and he lived with us for a period of time. We even had my uh, sister-in-law uh, living with us at one point in time when she... Uh, was expecting and was having some difficulty carrying the baby. And my mom helped her, you know, she stayed with us for a while. So we kind of were in and out of that extended family situation where in the small house that we had, we were a wayward home for refugees <laughs> on and <laughs> off during my, my, you know, younger years. <laughs> what else do we have? We also have the childless family. While most people think of families that include children, there are couples who either cannot or choose not to have children. The childless family is sometimes known as the forgotten family, as it does not meet the traditional standards set by society. Childless families consist of two partners living and working together. Many childless families take on the responsibility of pet ownership or have extensive contact with their nieces and nephews. There's also the stepper blended family. Over half of all marriages end in divorce, and many individuals subjected to a divorce choose to get remarried. 
This creates the step or blended family, which involves two separate families merging into one unit, new unit. It consists of a new husband, wife, or spouse, and their children from, a pre from previous marriages or relationships. Step families are about as common as the nuclear family, although they tend to have unique challenges, such as adjustment periods and discipline issues. Step, step families need to learn to work together and also work with their exes to ensure these family units run smoothly. And we technically have a step family here because uh, I come from a, a previous marriage and mommy comes from a previous marriage. Mommy didn't have any children from her previous marriage. And we have uh, Sam, obviously, uh, who's your stepbrother. Uh, it doesn't live with us at this point in time, but it's still, you know, we still qualify as a step family. It, I, I guess it depends really on what your definition of, of step family is. Like there's, there's certainly situations where a husband and a wife come together in second relationships or second marriages and both bring kids into the family. And you very quickly multiply the number of kids in a family. That adds very different dynamics. It's very difficult coming in, you know, think of yourself, some of your age, and all of a sudden you've got siblings that are your age now. Like, how would, how would you react to something like that? I'd probably react like, what? Because I, despite the fact that my brother had been visiting us for a while and still does, um, he wasn't always around. So for the most part, I lived in a, uh, in a way, single child home. We even had an entire discussion about an entire podcast on that, right. where I've kind of experienced being a single child, despite the fact I'm not really a single child. Yeah. Yeah. So ours is, I think, kind of unique, but technically it is a, a step family type environment here. Yeah. And... The only thing I'm kind of confused of is whether Sam's my stepbrother or my half brother. He, well, I'm not really sure what the clinical definition is. I mean, he's technically, from a biological standpoint, your half brother. But yeah, I guess he'd be your half brother. I don't know. It's so confusing. Like we said, families are very complicated. Yeah, and I guess our family's no different. <laughs> no, that's true. What else do we have? We also have the grandparent family. Many grandparents today are raising their grandchildren for a variety of reasons. One in 14 children is raised by their grandparents, and the parents are not present in the child's life. This could either be due to the parents' death, addiction, abandonment, or being unfit parents. Many grandparents need to go back to work or find additional sources of income to help raise their grandchildren. And that's tough, too. Um, the friend that I spoke of who had a single parent household, his grandmother was there as well. So the grandmother kind of, because she worked full time, too, and she was around for a lot of it. She helped to, to keep up the house. She helped to cook and stuff like that. So it was kind of a mix of that single parent, grandparent type uh, household that they had there. So, so again, even that is unique and it doesn't really fit into these definitions. These are very broad definitions that you kind of have to take with a grain of salt, I think, because I think everybody's situation is very unique. Yeah. Uh, for instance, you have foster families and adoptive families. Uh, adopt Adoptive and foster families fall under a similar category. Adoptive families consist of a parent or parents and one or more adopted children. Some families can have both biological and adopted children. The definition of adoption is the act of legally taking another child, another's child and bringing it up as one's own. Foster families are a bit different. Foster care is the temporary placement of children in the homes of adults who are not related to them. Children may live with foster families because of problems like abuse, and some foster parents even adopt the children they foster if the parent gives up full custody of their child. So there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what the best kind of family structure is. But as long as a family is filled with love and support for one another, it tends to be successful and thrive. Families need to do what's best for each other, 
and themselves, and that can be achieved in almost any unit that we talked about here, even the hybrid units that we've talked about. So classify R found. We, we kind of talked about the unique situation that we're in, but how do you feel? How would you classify us as a family right now? Well, hmm. I guess we are technically a step or blended family. Um, you know, both of you coming from divorce, you coming in with Sam's kid. Um, Sam's kid? <laughs> When did Sam have a kid? Did I miss no. a memo? No. Sam as your kid. Oh. <laughs> uh, sorry. Well, see, and that's the thing. Now that I think about it, technically, Sam would be mommy's stepson, but he would be your half-brother because there's a genetic link to Sam through me to you. Yeah, because when with stepkids, like, it would be between – Two other parents, um, and then, like, maybe Mommy had me with her ex-husband. Right. So if Mommy had you with someone else and I had Sam with someone else and Mommy and I got married, then you'd be stepbrother, stepsister. Yeah. But because I'm that genetic link, that genetic bridge, you're technically half-brother, half-sister. Yeah, that's complicated. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm sticking with. And, I mean, we also have extended family and it kind of falls into the last part of it um mommy's close friends with aunt chris and we have an entire area of extended family thanks to her yes we do so you know we have a family structure that doesn't fit into these definitions and i think a lot of people will find that they don't fit into these nice neat little boxes that we like to classify it beings as you know, we talk statistically, 22% of families are a nuclear family. And there's a higher than 50% divorce rate. So if you just look at those two numbers, they seem to be diametrically opposed as far as what the definition of a family is. And I think, I mean, you know, kind of my family history, most of my family has passed away. Most of mommy's family has passed away. The family that I have left have basically disowned me. So family really is what you make of it. Yeah. You know, it's it's the people that you care about. It's the people that care about you and that help you function and thrive and be a better person. Whether that's a blood relative, a legally legal relative through marriage. Or an extended family through friendship. I don't think it really matters how you're linked. It's really what that support structure looks like. So, you know, I say that most of my family's passed away. But really, I got a lot more family than just my blood relatives. And in my case, my blood relatives didn't turn out to be nearly as loyal as my non-blood relatives, I think. So, anyway... Uh, I think we're going to take another break, and then what are we going to talk about? We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to talk about how your families help you. All right, here we go. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. into entertainment a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media 
our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about healthy family relationships. And now we're going to talk about how your families help you. And this didn't really come from a website. It, the whole idea. You just sort of made this up. Well, I didn't make all of it up. (laughs) It, um, this, the entire idea of this podcast just came from my health lessons. So a lot of that, some of the information from the PowerPoint I used here. So just. Awesome. That works. Just figured I'd mention that. So we've mentioned how our family unit is one of the most important relationships you will have in your life. Your family helps shape who you are and are one of the main factors that determine who you will be, as well as providing you the support you need. So now we're going to talk about how your families help you stay healthier and just the main, benef- and just the main benefits you get from, uh, from a healthy family. So one of the main aspects that go into a healthy family is family interactions. There are different roles that a parent or guardian and a child or teen will play in their family relationship. Some of the main roles for parents or guardians are to meet the family's basic needs, like giving food and water, food, water, clothing, and shelter. Oh, well, like if we're cats. <laughs> yes. Well, beso- not the clothing part. Well, cats, that's, cats, cats. yeah, because you can't put clothing on our cats. Yeah. They would also establish rules and set limits, like telling teens to do chores, like getting teens to do chores or telling them no to something they may have wanted to do or have. Teach- or yes, they can say yes. Or yes, too. nor yet, no, or yes. Um, they al- they also teach the reasons for the rules, like you need to brush your teeth, you'll get cavities, and they teach values and skills, like how to treat others fairly and what's right from wrong. As for kids and teens, their roles in the family consist of respecting the authority of parents or guardians and taking on more responsibilities like doing chores or caring for younger siblings. Ultimately, healthy families are the foundation of a healthy society. Your family can help promote all aspects of your health. One major factor they promote is your physical health. They promote your physical health by providing for your basic physical needs, providing medical care, setting limits on behavior, and teaching health skills. Another major factor that your family promotes is your mental and emotional health. They promote this by providing a safe environment for you to express and deal with your emotions, giving you love and support, helping to meet your need to feel that you you belong, and by meeting, uh, meeting your need to feel valued and recognized. Family members can also provide affirmation by celebrating each other's achievements or showing appreciation for the ways you help out at home. Affirmation is a positive feedback that helps others feel appreciated and supported. Your family also helps to promote your social health as well. They do this by teaching you how to communicate and get along with others and teaching you how to cooperate with others and how to resolve conflicts. And finally, your family also helps you promote your healthy, your social health by helping you develop core ethical values. These include responsibility, honesty, and respect. And of course, the first question I have to throw out there is, does your family do that, these things for you? I mean, yeah. You guys definitely benefit me um, physically because... You know, I get food from you guys that I'm more than likely. Right. So we keep you. So we you're you're good as far as being a pet. We feed you. We give you water, and we give you shelter. I mean, you also make sure that if I am injured or if I'm sick, you guys make sure to give me medicine and. Are such. you bleeding? No. Do you need to go to the hospital? No. All right, you're fine. Shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I mean, okay, yes. Your family can... It does sound like I'm a pet. <laughs> but if I can't really get stuff on my own, you guys help me out. But, you know, in your favor, I can't teach the cat to run the vacuum cleaner. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You're much better at chores than the cats are. Yeah. And then my mental health, you guys have always been there um, telling me that I'm open to express my emotions and such. And a lot of the times you help me get through some really dark moments in my life. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> good to know I'm helping there because, you know, <laughs> I sometimes I feel like I don't help your emotional state. I mean, yeah, well, sometimes you push a little too far. You're always at least there to hear me out and let, and let me just, like, just, like, say what's wrong and you don't offer any judgment for the most part. No, I don't judge. I don't judge anybody. Yeah. You don't judge when I'm like that and, um, you know, and you sometimes offer, um, some help. Other times you just let me vent. That's true. Yeah. And then socially, um... Well, I'm socially inept, so I'm well, not sure I can help you out much there. That's all mommy. Well, yeah, but you guys, like, teach me, like, how I should be treating others and such. Um, you also kind of teach me how to communicate. Um. <laughs> kind of, I guess. I mean, this whole podcast is really a form of communication, I guess. I mean, yeah, you can probably categorize it as that. And, like, you always kind of try to, like... Sometimes nudge me to make friends, and, like, you always, like, seem to encourage when I talk about my friends, like, say, like, how have your friends been doing so far? You guys, well, mainly mommy. You don't really care. <laughs> you don't really care about that. Well, well, you know, I'm not big on friends myself, so it's hard for me to get excited for somebody else's friends. So, yeah, mommy probably is the one that mainly helps me with my social health. Yeah, hey, mommy. I mean, you are... Both of you help me equally most of the time. So so it seems pretty clear that you're getting benefit from the family unit itself. Yeah. Your friends and, and people you talk to at school, do you – I'm assuming they're in different scenarios, different family units than you are. Do you get the sense that they get some of these benefits as well? I mean, I would assume so. Um, of course, not all of my – not everyone has like a good enough a good family that will give them these benefits um but kind of from the sense of what i of what some of my friends are like unless they've told me otherwise i think so far they've gotten these benefits from their family okay well that's good i'm glad to hear that so we talked about the benefits and we didn't have anything else in the notes here but i did want to ask you know there's always two sides to every coin what do you think are some of the negatives of a family relationship that, that you, you probably should avoid? Um, well, first of all would probably be, I guess the major thing I have to probably discuss about is kind of all along the subject of divorce. Like, not everyone's going to work out. That's the big thing. And I know a lot of people may... And a lot of parents stay together if they're in a bad relationship, mainly because of their kids. But in a lot of cases, doing that might only harm the kids because having to deal with the mental trauma, basically, of having their parents constantly fight and not having that loving support from both of them, that, that does have a pretty negative effect. And just not... And I think the biggest thing is probably communication. If you don't have enough communication with your family, it's not going to go well. Like, if teens don't communicate with their parents, their relationship isn't going to be that well. They're not going to be able... Like, parents aren't going to know how to relate to their kids or understand what they're going through. Thus, they won't be able to help them go through pretty negative times in their lives. And it might stop them from being good influences on their kids' lives and have the kids go into more rebellious states. Um, but also parents, if they don't communicate with each other, they could end up ruining their own relationship and thus having a much larger impact on the rest of the family. Wow, that was 
that was much more thought out than I was expecting. And it was a very good answer, too. That's kind of exactly the uh, down the line that I was thinking, too. So kudos to you for having that level of insight. No pun intended, being insights in the teens. Yeah. Uh, but I think that was all we had. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing thoughts and shout outs. All righty. Alrighty, so to everyone out there, I just wanted to say that family is honestly what you make of it. There isn't one normal family, and there isn't a perfect family. But no matter if it's related by blood, marriage, or just because you're just close with people, family is the closest relationship you'll more than likely have, and it has plenty of benefits as long as it remains healthy. And if you have a family where you have issues, try to communicate with each other and find a better way to, and basically just evaluate your family life. Because family, be, a family is the most influential relationship you're going to have. And it can be, it's your, your family is normally your entire upbringing and is also a really big aspect of just your life in general. And, as long as you maintain a healthy relationship with your family, you should also have a pretty healthy life. All right. I can't argue with that. I think that's good advice. Thank you. Uh, before we go, we do have a little bit of podcast business to uh, finish up with. Will you want to want to do that for us? Sure. So our audio versions of the podcast are listed as Insights into Teens. You can get video versions of the podcast that are listed as Insights into Things. We're available on all popular podcast services, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Buzzsprout, Podbean, Stitcher, Castro, Pandora, honestly, anywhere well, you can get a really podcast. All of them, huh? wow. Yeah, okay. sure, why not? Go ahead. So you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We would really love to hear from you. You can basically tell us what podcast, what uh, topics you wanted to discuss, what you don't want us to discuss, just feedback in general. Uh, we're also on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get all of this and much more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. And I guess, do you want to do my part? No, you do your part too. Um, don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.